Hey guys, I know it's Captech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I'm going to do questions and answers. So basically, if someone gets a job in IT, I tell them, dude, girl, gal, give me your questions and I make a, I make a video on it and I'll answer it to the best of my ability. Obviously, my questions will not be 100% accurate. You know, I just do it to the best of my ability. Like I said, nobody knows everything, but I try to answer it to the best of my ability as I possibly can. So, um, someone that got a job for Dell, and I'll, I'll put the screenshot here somewhere and I'll show you what it is. But he got a job for Dell and he's starting with Dell on, I have to I actually have, I'm looking at the chat right now, uh, May 26. Alright, so, as always, if you're new to my channel, I do IT videos, CompTIA videos, talk about how to get into desktop support, tech support. Um, I go live here and there on the weekends where we do hands on training. So, as always, rate, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, that way you know when I go live, because I do go live every once in a while, and you'll, you'll see me pop up, and you could ask me anything about your resume, um, some technical stuff that, 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 you're, that you're trying to deal with, something you're trying to learn, maybe you need help with something, let me know. I am here, I'm not going to ignore you, I, mean, I get busy sometimes, but I am here to help you. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe. So let's get right into it. So question number one, and um, obviously I'll put the screenshot here as I'm talking to you. So... I know all you. I know all you ask is the second, as a send interview question. So I was asked if I put you in a room with a computer and all the components to build it, what will you use to build a functioning computer and describe each component function? So there is, there is the motherboard. So the motherboard, is, there are different types of motherboard. There's a micro ATX. There's I ATX. Um, I don't want to go in depth with that, but there are different types of motherboards. So you have to figure out whether the motherboard is compatible with the, with the um, CPU, the central processing unit. So. The motherboard might be an i5, an i7 compatible, i9. Also, you need to keep in touch and keep in mind that the the motherboard and the CPU are compatible with the graphics card. Because if the graphics card is not compatible, it will bottleneck. So basically, you'll you, you'll have an issue where the computer will lag and freeze when you're trying to run like Adobe Photoshop or you're you're into gaming like I am. And I had that issue before. The computer would bottleneck for some reason. So it would bottleneck because the graphics card was really good but the CPU was really bad. So you have to have a really decent CPU in order to run a good graphics card. And it, it tells you like, when you buy a graphics card, it tells you what, what CPUs are supported by it and stuff like that, well, how much memory you need recommended for it to run. So you need to know the motherboard, you need to understand the memory. So every every motherboard is different. Some some are, are expandable up to 64 gigs of RAM. Some are, you can max it out to 32 gigs of RAM. Some you can max it out to 128 gigs of RAM, so it depends on what kind of motherboard you have. So you need to understand the, the motherboard, uh, the north bridge, the south bridge. Obviously, there's a CMOS battery on the motherboard. Um, you need to understand the graphics card. You need to understand the hard drive. Do you want a regular hard drive, like a Seagate hard drive or Western Digital? Or do you just, or you just want to go with the typical Samsung SSD hard drive? You could get that as well. You know, I recommend a Samsung SSD hard drive. And a graphics card that runs really well, like a 1080 Ti or a 2080 Ti with 8 to 12 gigs of RAM. And then I will run an i9 processor and oh man, it'll be, it'll be such a monster of a computer. You have no idea what a liquid cooling system and a couple of fans here and there on the CPU. Um, and also you need to know the heat sink. You need to be familiar with the CPU and the heat sink and the thermal paste. So that's how I would answer that question basically. And then you see that when I'm answering it, I know what I'm talking about. So that's basically what it is. And you're naming all the components of the, of the computer. So you have the memory, the memory, um, you know, it affects a lot of different things. Um, you, you, have, you have your hard drive. Obviously you install the operating system on the hard drive. Your memory is, um, and besides what it does, it, you know, it reads and writes on the computer, it does all that, just like the hard drive reads, reads and writes on the computer. The more memory you have, the more processes you could open at the same time. That's when you go to Task Manager, it shows CPU, it shows memory, it shows a bunch of other stuff as well. So that's how I would answer that question, all right? Um, question number two, a user calls and says that computer isn't turning on. So if a computer isn't turning on, um, first thing I want to know is, is what did you see on their screen? So maybe the monitor is not on. Maybe maybe the monitor is not completely on. So maybe they have to go and just turn the monitor on. It could be that. It could be that as simple as that. It could also mean that the computer is just not on at all. So you might have to hit the little. So some computers have the circle with the little line with the line across in the middle of it. The circle and the line that means to turn it on. So you probably have to press that power button and turn it on and just wait a little bit and the computer turns on and you see it on the monitor. So the best way to do it is. You get a clear answer from them, so you try to narrow it down to your best of your ability, and you ask them, what do you see on your computer? Is your computer on? I don't see anything. Tell me, what do you see? I need to know, what do you see? So you need to, you need to talk to them as if they're your mom and dad, like I always tell people, and tell them, tell me, what do you see on your screen? Do you see anything on your screen? No. 
Do you see a monitor on your screen? Yeah, I see my monitor. Is it coming on? No, it's not on. Oh, maybe you gotta turn it on. Maybe there's a power button on the bottom of it, you have to press it and turn it on. Or maybe it's right in front of it and you gotta press it and turn it on. Or maybe it's on the side of it and you gotta turn it on. Is that on? Uh, I don't know. Kevin, me go check. Yeah, I think that's it. And then they, or that, or, or um, the, the outlet on the wall is not on. You know, you, you know, there's a power outlet and stuff like that. It's probably not on either. It could be a bunch of different things. So you have to narrow it down, if that makes sense. Um, question number four. Or, sorry, question number three. Uh, the post isn't working. What could be the issue? So the post is uh, an issue usually with the memory. It could also mean the graphics card. It could be a bad, bad, bad memory. It could be a bad graphics card. Um, it could be a, it could be a, it could mean a bunch of different things. So when you have a post issue, it, um, obviously when you turn on the computer, um, when you have a post issue, it could, it could mean that you get a certain number of beeps as well. So like if a computer beeps five to six, seven times, you have to go to the manufacturer or website and it will tell you what's wrong with the computer. It might tell you what's wrong with the computer. It might say the graphics card is bad. It might say the memory is bad. It might say that this mem there's a memory leak. It might say something like that. So you have to go to the manufacturing website and figure out whether it's a memory issue or a graphics card issue. Sometimes it can even be a hard drive issue for, for all we know. So we don't know what the issue is. So you have to narrow it down because it will give you an error message on the screen and it will tell you what it is. Either that or it will beep randomly. Either either it will beep randomly, the computer will beep randomly, or believe it or not, this, this sounds crazy. Uh, maybe you've seen this before, maybe you've not seen this before. Uh, when you turn the computer on, it will either beep or it will give you lights. So the light might the light on the on the on the power button might turn yellow, might turn red, might turn blue, might turn a different color. And then based on the color of the light of the power button symbol, that basically if you go to the manufacturing website, it would actually tell you what it means. So it will tell you, oh, this is a bad memory. It will tell you um the memory is faulty. It will tell you this memory is not compatible with this computer. It will tell you like this memory doesn't belong with this computer. It will tell you something like that. So th those are the things that you need to look at when you when you have an issue with the post on the computer. That means the computer's just not loading properly. Something's wrong with it. So you have you have to figure out what the hell's going on with it. So that's basically what it is. Um a user is able to log in, uh, question number four. A user is able to log into a computer, but every time they open an application, they get an application processing error. So well, if I see that, that sounds like an MS config uh, issue. So if you go to if you go to the start menu on the bottom left hand side and you type MS config, maybe something's starting up immediately when the computer turns on. You might have to shut that off, or you have you might have to remove that or uninstall that. It could mean that. It could also be Event Viewer. So you might have to go into Event Viewer and see which application keeps crashing. That's the best way to do it. So if you go into Event Viewer on the computer and you check the logs and you check the error messages, it will tell you why it's crashing, it will tell you what's going on with the application, and it will give you some sort of error number, like an error number 8008XXADCAA, uh, whatever, it will tell you that, it will tell you why you're getting that and why that keeps happening on that computer. So there's things that you need to check when you when you have an application issue. It could also mean that you have to uninstall and reinstall an application. It could also mean that there was a Windows update recently and that's affecting it for it to work properly. It could mean a bunch of different things. So you have to narrow it down if that makes sense. Um, how do you install a new operating system? That, that does not, that's not that bad. So if you install a new operating system, this is question number five. How do you install a new operating system? So that's basically, you put a flash drive, you make a bootable flash drive. Um, do I have a flash drive here? I probably do. Yes, I do. So you make, you boot, you make a bootable flash drive. Um, well, that's actually a USB something else. This is something else, but may, may just pretend it's a flash drive. Um, you have a bootable flash drive, and basically you put it on the computer, uh, you press F12, you boot into the flash drive, or you put a CD, whatever you do. Um, and then when you, when you hit install, um, obviously you got to put the ISO or the image on the flash drive or on the CD, and you hit next. And then it tells you what country you want to put, United States, whatever. Uh, hit next, you hit the license agreement. Then when you go into, you hit next again, then you go into, um, do you want to upgrade this computer or do you want to install a brand new image on this computer and uh, upgrade this computer or install a fresh new image? And you hit, hit install fresh new image, you hit next, and then it tells you the partition. Do you want to create a separate partition for this or do you want to just install everything on the hard drive on that C drive that you have on the computer? And you hit next, and that's it. You could make a new partition if you want and you, you wait for it to install. And then you're good to go after that. So that's how you install the operating system on a computer. Obviously, there are other methods to install it. You could do SSCF, if you use imaging. Um, you could use Avanti, if you use imaging. You could use Norton Ghost. So 
um, to install a new operating system on a computer. It could, also, it could mean that. It could be imaging as well. Like you, you basically go and press F12. Um, not even go press F12. You go into the BIOS first. You press the delete or AD escape key. You enable boot over Pixie. You restart the computer. You press F12. You go into IPv4. You click on IPv4 and then you boot into your server and then you boot and image the computer. It could mean that as well. So it could mean a lot of different things. So it depends what he wants you to do. What, what, what kind? So as you see, the question is very generic. It could mean like imaging a new computer on on a on an image or imaging a new computer just by installing the Windows operating system. Like what do you want? What do you mean by that? So you gotta narrow down the the question that they're asking you. It could mean a lot of different things. But that's how I would answer that question. Um, number six. Uh, the user goes to open any web browser but gets an error for the site. For gets an error, so a user opens it in a web browser, gets an error for any site. What could be the issue? Um, any site. So that sounds like an issue. With, that sounds like a like a like a DNS issue with their computer. Are they are, are they getting are they able to they're not able to reach any site? That sounds like an internet connection problem. So are they do they have an IP address? So this is like a simple. Um, this simple question could be very complicated. So you have to go into your computer, go to the bottom left hand side, go to the start menu, you type CMD, you open up CMD, you type IP config, you want to make sure that it has an IP address of 10 or 192, whatever it has. Obviously, if it's 169 as an IP file, it's a private IP address, so it's not going to work. So you want to do that first. So the IP address seems legit or seems right. You do IP config and you do space slash flush DNS. You might have to do IP config space slash flush DNS or IP, IP config slash release, IP config slash renew, and then try going to the website again after that. So sometimes it could be an issue like that. Or it could be a really silly issue where basically it works on Chrome, but it doesn't work on, on um, IE. Or vice versa, it doesn't work on either of them. So it doesn't work on either of them and you have a valid IP address and you type IP config release, renew, flush DNS and all that, it doesn't work. Maybe restart the computer. You tried everything, restart the computer. It could be that as well. It could also mean that the computer doesn't doesn't have an IP address from the DNS server or from the, the server itself. So you might have to talk to a server admin. It could mean a bunch of different things. So you might want to narrow it down to see what the hell is going on with that computer. Um, it could also mean that um, you want to find out if everyone else is having the same issue as well. So is everyone else being affected by the internet or is just this one individual person? If this is one individual person, you want to try all these commands first on CMD before you make them restart the computer and then see if that fixes the problem. But then you might have to get a server admin involved because you don't know, maybe maybe the computer fell off the domain, maybe the computer is not getting an IP address from the server, you don't know. So we have to check all that. So hopefully that makes sense. That's how I would answer that question. Um, question... Is that the last question? Yeah, I think that's it. I know this is all the questions that you. I, I think I think that's it. I know this is all you asked in return. I appreciate you, bro. All right, yeah. So that's all the questions. Um, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I figure I try a different angle today to see you know see how it looks. Um, I'll be live today later on today, so hopefully you watch that video. Um, with me going live, you'll see me soon going live at 2 p.m. EST time, and I hope this video helps you out, all right? I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday. Take care. Peace. Later.